Before Colombia took over the rotating presidency for the COP16 summit, China led the world's biodiversity conservation dialogue. As president of COP15, China had a challenging role to play. Unite nearly 200 countries, reconcile diverging positions, and get an ambitious agreement approved for biodiversity conservation. The result was the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework that was adopted in December 2022 with 196 countries approving the agreement. Ahead of the COP16 summit, countries were encouraged to present their national biodiversity strategies and action plans to be in line with the new global biodiversity framework. On the second day of the convention, the COP16 media spokesperson reported that 35 nations submitted their plan. During the conference, China's Minister of the Environment held various discussions on China's goals as the country presented their updated biodiversity action plan in January. We launched a new version of NBSAP in January this year with the vision of building a beautiful China where people and nature coexist in harmony and proposed China's biodiversity conservation goals for 2030 and 2035. In addition, we deployed a total of 27 priority actions and 75 priority projects in four priority areas, namely mainstreaming biodiversity, addressing the risk of biodiversity loss, sustainable use of biodiversity, and modernizing biodiversity governance capacity. China is the first developing country to complete the update of NPSAP. And then Dr. Lin Li is senior director of the Global Policy and Advocacy at World Wildlife International. She previously led WWF's China Conservation Program for 11 years. The World Wildlife Fund was the first NGO invited into China in the 1980s. And Dr. Li says the changes in China's conservation and sustainability policies have grown exponentially over the last few years. This 40 years is also the time when we see China going through rapid economic development. And we know when the economic development is really rapid, nature suffers. So it's, it's critical to, to remember that nature sustains us, even the economy development. So therefore, we are really happy to see China is putting a path towards a green and a low carbon development. And this is interesting for the world to know that they do that for the fourfold purposes. One is to bring the, human development back in harmony with nature. WWF China is working with stakeholders in China, including the government, on conservation of wildlife and ecosystems, as well with parks officials to build the biggest national park system in China, experiences they shared at COP16. I think the world has a lot to learn from China. You know, this country has a different context to, to, to deal with, but a lot of essence which is really going towards sustainability is something the world needs to really learn, share, so that we can all go through the future living in harmony with nature together. For any conservation work, the biggest challenge is funding. In May, the Kunming Biodiversity Fund was launched in support of biodiversity conservation in developing countries. China pledged more than 200 million U.S. dollars as an incentive for other countries to take action. Michelle Bega, CGTN. Cali, Colombia.